Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic is Stand Tall Today. Have you found yourself walking into a store or shopping mall and seeing a person with poor posture, hunched over, or with their head down? Whenever I see someone like that, I hear the voice of my mother reminding me to stand up straight and pull my shoulders back. Life has a way of bending us over, pulling us down, and taking the joy out of our steps. In Luke chapter 13, we find Jesus making his way to Jerusalem for the last time. Along the way, he made his last known visit to a synagogue. In this particular synagogue, Jesus found a woman who was bent over. She was bent over so much that she could no longer straighten herself up. She was doubled over so far that the only way she could see where she was going was to lift her head as far back as her neck could move. She was in terrible condition. In Luke, we read, there was a woman who for 18 years had had a sickness caused by a spirit and she was bent over double and could not straighten up at all. Luke chapter 13 and verse 11. Note with me the lady's condition. She had a sickness that kept her bent over. There was nothing she could do about it, and so far there was nothing anyone else could do to straighten things up for her. She could never see things as they really are, because she could never straighten up enough to get the full picture of life. She had been stuck in this condition for 18 years. Clearly, she had a health problem. But more than a health problem, she had a habit problem. She got up with the same pain every day. She faced the same chores every day. She felt defeated every day. Things never straightened out for her. She went about the same routine. She still attended religious gatherings. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Is there anyone listening to me for whom things never seem to straighten out? You're still dealing with the same fears and anxieties for as long as you can remember. There's always been something holding you back from walking into all the spirit has for you. <clears throat> You're dealing with the same problems. You can't be delivered by your good intentions. You're dealing with the same addictions. You're plagued with feelings of unworthiness, uselessness, and weakness. All of this was about to change for this lady because on this day, she was going to meet Jesus. When Jesus entered her synagogue, everything changed. When Jesus saw her, he called her over, Luke chapter 13 and verse 12. People had stopped noticing her, but Jesus saw her. People wished she'd go away, but Jesus saw her and felt compassion for her. Jesus called her to stand in front of him, and she moved from where she was to where Jesus was. I invite you to move from where you are to where Jesus is. Jesus knew that this woman was bent over from something that was not obvious to everyone else. Her bad situation was about to change forever. Jesus was not going to do what had been done for 18 years. He was about to do a new thing. What is it that Jesus saw that the religious leaders missed? Twice in the story, we are told the cause of her problem. In verse 11, we read, the woman had a disabling spirit for 18 years. In verse 16, Jesus asks the religious leaders this question, should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free. 
Her problem was not as it appeared. What people saw was the bend in her back, but Jesus saw the bend in her spirit. She was under a demonic attack. Satan had assigned a demon to keep her doubled over physically and spiritually. Many people have been bent over for a long time because they have been addressing the wrong problem. They're trying to change their behavior on the outside without dealing with the demon on the inside. You might ask, how can I know if I'm dealing with the demon? The answer is simple. The problem can't be fixed by doctors, and it won't go away. We're not talking about a bad day. We're talking about 18 long years. We're talking about bad demons. This is why the Bible says, watch out for bitterness and anger, because it opens up an attack by the devil. This is what we read. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27. The word for foothold is topos. It is used in the ancient language to describe a place, a land, or an occasion. Once the devil gets a foothold, he enters that place and holds people hostage. The lady could not straighten up because demons had her bent over. The spiritual realm was holding her hostage, not the physical realm. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said these words, Woman, you are freed from your disability. Luke chapter 13 and verse 12. Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight how she praised God. That's how one modern translation puts it. One word lets you know that she was free, and that word is instantly. Her healing was not progressive. Eighteen years of being bent over was banished in a second. She was not just having a good moment. Her life had taken a whole new direction. The root cause of her problem was gone. She was delivered and healed in the same moment. I've seen demons lodge in people's arms and backs and legs. And one of the most common places for demons to lodge is in the thoughts, mind, and mouths of people. I have good news. Jesus gave us authority over all demons because he completely defeated Satan on the cross. Say with me, Satan, you are defeated. You have no authority over me. Whatever Satan is trying to do to you, he's not doing on his own authority. He is doing it with your permission. But once he gets in with your permission, he begins to use your authority against you. What he is doing to you is because there is something in you that has said to him, it's okay to do this. You may not be aware of how he is doing this to you, but Jesus is. If Jesus had not walked into that synagogue on that day, it is most likely the lady would have died in her bent condition. Uh, today, Jesus is ready to do for you what he did for this bent over lady. Who is ready to deny the devil the opportunity to keep you bent over for the rest of your life? You don't have to die bent over physically or spiritually or emotionally. You can walk in victory and stand tall. If the Lord has opened your eyes today to see that there could be a spirit behind your physical or emotional challenges, Try saying these words with me. I forgive everyone for everything. Try it again. I forgive everyone for everything. Now let's take it deeper. I forgive everyone for everything from my heart. And now even deeper. I forgive everyone for everything because Jesus has forgiven me. And then finally... I forgive everyone for everything because Satan was defeated 
on the cross. I command Satan to let go of his grip on you right now. I say to you today, be free in the name and the power of Jesus. I was teaching a seminar on healing in Uganda, and a lady came late to the meeting, and she had exactly this person's condition. She was hunched over. In fact, she could only walk by pushing a wheelchair in front of her, a plastic chair. She would pick the chair up, put it a few feet in front of her, and take some small steps towards it. It took her a long time to come to the conference, but everybody in that village knew who she was and knew she was coming to the meeting. And I tell you, if I couldn't deal with that lady, nothing that I would say to that group would make any sense at all. And when she finally arrived at the meeting and the Spirit of God prompted me, I simply said, Mama, stand up in the name of Jesus. She shook her head. And she was letting me know there was deep-seated unbelief in her spirit. Three times I said to her, Mama, stand up. And she shook her head. On the fourth time, I commanded her more firmly, Mama, stand up right now. She stood up. Well, the conference erupted in praise because the spirit on her had been broken off. Then I said to her, Mama, take three steps forward. And she took three steps forward all on her own, how they praised God. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a few moments to pray for you. If you're bent over, I say to you, in Jesus' name, stand tall. If you have back problems, in Jesus' name, stand tall. If you have leg problems, in Jesus' name, stand tall. If you have feet problems, I say to you in Jesus' name, stand tall. If you have problems in your arms or elbows or shoulders or wrists, in Jesus' name, stand tall. If you have a neck problem, I command your neck to be loosed by the power of Jesus. If you have just been touched by these declarations over you and felt the presence of God healing you and greater mobility has come into your life, write to me and let me know what God has just done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.